G'day everyone and welcome to an old Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update a lot later than normal tonight, the 21st of March 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is brought to you by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. On the region-wide satellite picture, we can see that we've got a lot of convective activity occurring around the South Pacific Convergence Zone, typical of a developing El Nino event here, and we are now into a weak El Nino phase, and this is what we tend to see, a lot of convection out here in the Central Pacific. Across into Australia, we've got a trough system through here, southeast Queensland dumping some fairly strong thunderstorm activity here on the southeast corner of the state. Tropical cyclone Nathan continues to track to the west to west northwest. We had some very strong thunderstorm activity around Darwin earlier today and also some very strong storm activity around the Kimberley with some weaker storm activity through inland WA. But our topic of conversation, of course, is going to be tropical cyclone Nathan. Nathan has progressed uh, over to here to the west to west northwest and has steadily intensified through the day. Probably not at the rate that we expected. We expected a probably slightly faster intensification, but we certainly see good spiral banding into a low level circulation centre now, completely shrouded by convective cloud. If we look at the convective depth of the system, we can see some very deep convection developing here this evening. It wouldn't be too far away from Category 2, and in fact, as I'm doing this update, I would be surprised if the Bureau don't upgrade him to Category 2. The Joint Typhoon Warning Centre track from earlier this evening had the system tracking here just to the south of Gove Airport. Now, that has moved significantly southwards in the past 12 to 24 hours. Uh, the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre was adamant that the system was moving just to the north of Gove Airport, right over the top of Nullanby. At this stage, it looks like it's going to continue tracking just to the south of that uh, with wind gusts or wind, wind sustained wind speeds up to around 50 knots, which is Category 2 intensity, then dropping maybe to Category 1 around Elgo Island and then popping back out here into the ocean and possibly making Category 2 again before finally settling in over land here on the northwestern top end. Now there is uh, other alternative guidance that pushes it a little bit further to the west, in which case it has slightly better chance of remaining a weak tropical cyclone. The system currently lies in weak vertical wind shear of around about 10 knots, and the track is very close to certain, at least in the short term, of that west-northwest motion, with the current steering mechanism being an obvious west east southeast to west northwest motion here so the system's not going to defy that steering flow it's going to continue tracking in that direction latest microwave image shows a partially exposed eye here to the north but really the development of some very strong convection on the south on the western and southern edge eye wall uh, and so we can see that the system if it starts to wrap around over the next few hours would certainly see some uh, potential rapid intensification on approach to the coast no issue with dry air the atmosphere is moist and primed and ready to go the GFS forecast model ensemble here is showing a direct hit on Gove. So it's actually showing a system that tracks directly northwest from here. Now, the system hasn't shown that sort of motion just yet, so it'll be uh, very unlikely to probably make it either as a direct hit on Gove or just to the north. It's more than likely going to travel just south of that main track, but um, it's going to be touch and go, and we don't, we don't want to be lulling anyone here into a false sense of security. The UK Meteorological Agency also tipping that direct northwest motion from where the system is here. So as I mentioned, to get to uh, to the actual coast here around Nullanboy, it really has to move directly northwest from now. The CMC is tipping a very close shave, but just to the south. It's only going to be a few kilometres in it, folks, but it could be the difference between seeing destructive winds and just damaging wind gusts. The European model we can see here, the actual track is just to the south of Gove, but really touch and go, folks. As I mentioned, Category 2 intensity, expecting to hit the coast around about 9 to 11 a.m. tomorrow uh, on most of the computer guidance, and then track continue to track northwest and back off the coast here around Elko Island. Uh, so Elko Island residents expecting to see a Category 1 intensity system might intensify a little bit more if it gets off the coast and manages to get off the coast a fair way. Then as it tracks southwest, it's expected to be a marginal system and then possibly re-intensify out here off WA and then become a 
one of two things here, folks. It could become an intense tropical cyclone off the coast of WA, or it could peter off into a very weak low. It's very difficult to tell at this stage what the wind shear will be doing here. Wind shear and dry air are going to be the two main issues in this region. Uh, in about five to seven days' time, and we just don't know what the shear forecasts are going to be out that far. For tonight's update, we're only going to concentrate on the effects on Gove and Elko Island. As tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night's update, though, we'll start to look more at Darwin's effects and then start to look more at the long-term uh, possibilities for this system. Interestingly, the European has a very sharp rise in intensity of the system to about a 75 knot cat 3 uh, just before landfall. So the Euro is really picking up some really good conditions there. As I mentioned, we've got very weak shear and uh, we've got good upper level divergence. So it should be all systems go overnight for some rapid intensification. And the Euro has picked up on that, maybe has slightly overdone it, uh, and they are predicting category 3 on landfall. And you can see it here, the central pressure getting down to around about the 972 to 975 range. Alrighty, let's look for time frames and landfall p potential and what we can experience. Alright, and firstly we're going to look for our subscribers between uh, Gove and Aliangula. And we can see here that at 4am this morning we're starting to see gale force winds developing along the northeastern parts of Groot Island. Still only winds at 15 to 20 knots over Gove and the Nullanby area. And as we go to 7am we see conditions start to dramatically uh, get worse here on the eastern parts of the Groot Island. And then what we also see is an increase in wind speeds to around about 30 knots across the Gove region. As we go to 10 a.m. tomorrow, we can see the cyclone very close to landfall here, starting to get destructive winds uh, right in that, uh, right in that, particularly that southwestern quadrant. By the looks of this, you can see here the darker shading of purple located to the southwest of the system. If we look at where Nullanby is in relation to all that, you can see it here at the tip of the Gove Peninsula. Uh, then, as we go to 1 p.m. We can see that the cyclone passes just to the south of, of Nullanby by around about uh, 60 or so kilometres. And Nullanby itself re reporting northerlies here at 30 to 40 knots. Uh, while the strongest winds are in no man's land in between the two areas. As we go to Sunday 4pm we see the system continuing to track here to the northwest or west-northwest. You can see fairly fresh to strong winds again in Nullanby. Uh, around about 25 to 30 knots. Now the next area we're obviously looking for wind strengths is this area around Elko Island which copped it bad for lamb. And we can see here as we go to 7pm tomorrow they're starting to get southwesterlies at 30 to 40 knots. The, air, the winds around Gove are starting to drop off to about 15 to 20, maybe even 20 to 25s. Um, and then as we go to 10pm Sunday we have winds here of around to about 25 to 30, 30 to 35 knots just offshore off Elko Island and heading west towards Millingimby. Tomorrow night we'll have another update so I'm not going to go anywhere past that for now. Subscribers in the morning will have an update for you and we'll talk a little bit more about the longer term effects. If we have a look at rainfall we can see that the rainfall starts around about uh, well right about now when you're watching this broadcast. If we go to 4am we can see that some of that moderate to heavy rain is now uh, hitting that Elko Island area and also hitting the Gove Peninsula region here. You can see the feeder banding coming in from the north right into the centre of the system here creating some moderate to heavy falls as well. As we go to 7am and 10 a.m. is when we're starting to see the central part of the circulation making landfall and you can see the heavy rain associated with the core circulation here. We can also see the banding really really prevalent. If I zoom out for you you can really see that banding coming in and around the circulation center here. So that's a quite a marked system. It's got quite a good moisture flow into it. If you remember back when it was east of Queensland we were wondering whether it would have enough moisture and it certainly has enough moisture now. As we go to 1pm we can see the system has made landfall here uh, to the south of Gove and we have very heavy rainfall in and around its circulation and along the feeder banding to the northeast of it. As we go to 4pm we can see the system located over the northeast Arnhem district and you can see the heaviest of rainfall is located to its east and northeast along the track that it went through. As we go to 7pm it goes over to Elko Island and we can see here it's the area to the east primarily copping the heaviest rainfall. 
Obviously, by also 7 p.m., we've got some fairly heavy shower and storm activity across the Darwin area as well. And that, while it's not directly associated with, this, with the cyclone, we're certainly seeing an enhancement of severe potential for those thunderstorms because of Tropical Cyclone Nathan. And by 10 p.m. tomorrow night, we see Cyclone Nathan is now off the coast or just on the coast here and about to pop off the coast and once again we have those heavy feeder bands out here to the east uh, pu pushing moderate to heavy falls of rain into the Nullanboy area. And as I mentioned at the start of the broadcast, during the broadcast the Bureau has just issued their latest cyclone advice up upgrading tropical cyclone uh, Nathan to a category 2 and if we look at the way the system is really ramping up here it's moving quite quickly here to the west northwest and at this rate it is likely to make a landfall just to the south here of Gove it's going to be uncomfortably uncomfortably very close though so expect to see category 2 winds over the top of Nullanboy and if you don't uh, count it as a bit of a blessing but at this stage uh, you would be looking at it being very close the last few frames particularly have the system jutting a little bit further to the northwest and if that continues if that track continues then we would see a crossing right over the top of the Gove Peninsula and you can see here the Bureau of Meteorology latest track map of the system. You can see them making landfall a little earlier than the computer model that I just showed you showed. Uh, and that is directly related to the fact that the last few frames on radar, the system has really started to motor along to the west-northwest. You can see the coastal crossing located at around about 50 kilometres to the south of Nullanboy, but once again, as I mentioned, very, very uncomfortably close. And you can see the error margin here. If the system now adopts a northwest track, it'll push it straight over the top of Nullanboy. And uh, at this stage, we're looking at the system crossing just to the south there and then pop popping straight over the top of Elko Island, uh, pu pushing gales onto Elko and Millingimby. So, folks, thanks for watching this update. If you are in Nullanboy and... Gove and to a lesser extent on Elko Island and Millingimby, please make sure you're taking your necessary precautions and be aware that the southwestern edge eye wall will pack the greatest punch and also be aware some very heavy rain if you happen to be near the core and also to the east of the core of the system. We'll have a subscriber update in the morning at around about 8 or 9 a.m. just around about the time of landfall and we'll have another public video update tomorrow night and we'll talk about what this means for Darwin into the longer term or the medium term.